Hey guys, it's a beautiful day. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to one of my favorite electric bikes. This is the Reese & Mueller Delight GT Roll-Off. It has the electronically shifted roll-off 14 gears offering a 526 degree gear ratio. And this thing is awesome, but it weighs more than the standard cassette derailleur setup, which they do sell. They have like three versions of this bike and they offer the class one which is what we're looking at here with the bosch performance line cx it's the high torque motor but they also have the performance line speed so you could get this in class three and it would just make an awesome commuting electric bike potentially a good touring electric bike the setup right we have right here just has a standard um vertically mounting power tube 500 but they have a model called the super delight which has two of those so one in the down tube one in the top tube it, it adds some weight to the bike i actually weighed this battery earlier at about 6.8 pounds with that plastic rubberized cover attached to the top so you know for someone like me i'm, I'm relatively lightweight i'm an efficient rider and i prefer to have a lower center of gravity you can see how the battery is low like that motor is also very low versus you know you, you put some weight up here and the, the bike starts to change this is already kind of a beefy electric bike about 63 pounds as shown without that lock and without this bottle so this is a really cool fabric bottle that's got this proprietary mounting design right here so it clips on to the near the steering tube up there very nice and you'll see that they also have bottle cage bosses right there on the down tube and below the top tube perfect for a folding lock and this is the abyss bordeaux alarm lock i think it's 6000 this thing is is awesome because it's key to like to match the battery abyss keys i mean everything on this bike is top of the line the only complaint i have about it of course is going to be price it's like 8700 dollars without some of the upgrades that you see here like the uh, fox air fork and air shock in the rear um you know that that is nice because air is a little bit more adjustable in spring it's going to lower the weight and fox just makes really nice stuff look at these black anodized stanchions right here 34 millimeter stanchion diameter just really really beefy um but you know it comes back to like 8700 bucks that's the starting price this is like 9600 bucks as shown okay but this is one of the only electric bikes that has a suspended rear rack right and so it maybe you want to put like a child seat on this or you want to have some panniers put your laptop in there and you don't want that thing to get banged around this is like more of a vehicle electric bike and I'm gonna go through some of the other specs and things um, just to talk about it and give you give you a nice overview. There, there are some complaints, but it really depends on how you configure it. Again, I would probably go lightweight and a little bit crisp, um, more efficient shifting with uh, standard cassette and derailleur. The electronic shifting is cool. It does connect to like the shift detection, so it automatically eases off as you shift gears up here. You just have a button just up and down. You don't need to like press levers. You don't need that extra hand strength. You're not gonna get mashing. You're not gonna have to like tune up a derailleur over time. And there is no derailleur hanging down. So this is gonna be a little bit less vulnerable, but it does feel a little bit more mechanical. There's more noise and kind of like <laughs> friction happening. And that might reduce over time. This is like a brand new bike, kind of a demo bike that I'm checking out here today. Uh, the, the belt drives, those tend to last even longer than chains. And Reese & Mueller has done a really cool design work here with 60 tooth Gates carbon drive CDX. That's a center track cog up front or chain ring. You can see it has that center track which matches this belt so it doesn't start to go off to one side that's what that's for and it's got this nice aluminum alloy guard so you don't get your pants and stuff snagged they've even got a little bit of a it's almost like a guide on top so you've got a little almost like for clearing mud or something potentially and then there's this pulley wheel that raises it up and over that right chain stay and the reason they do that is otherwise they would have to put a cut in the frame somewhere or you'd have to like disassemble the whole rear swing arm, which is a lot of work if you have to do work, uh, kind of maintenance or change a flat or anything like that on the rear wheel. So this is a really cool design, quick release in the front and rear, which is really nice. I measured this like a 135 millimeter hub spacing and then it's a nine millimeter axle and it's not a skewer. So this is an actual axle that's connected to that uh, roll off in the back versus up front this has boost hub spacing which means it's a little bit wider 110 millimeters instead of 100 and it gives you a little bit more it's like a sturdier bracing angle with the spokes and then 
15 millimeter quick release skewer that goes through and again fox does a great job you can actually dial that thing in so you make sure your quick release lever is pointed up instead of down or forward where it could get snagged i love that we've got 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes magura great setup here both of them have like this brake light activation so i have the the bike turned on right now and if i pull one of these brakes got the m99 in the rear five led lights this is the m99 mini up front super super bright and it aims and when you aim it it actually kind of changes the position of the display so one of the things i was concerned about earlier was like this is an adjustable angle custom ergotech stem Okay, it's very sturdy, it's beefy, it allows you to kind of raise the handlebar. Has a smaller uh, sort of clamp diameter than I was expecting, 25.4 versus 31.8 on a lot of other mountain bike setups. So maybe that's different on the GX instead of these smooth like city tires, they're more off-road oriented, which makes sense. It's a full suspension bike. Again, the suspended rack is, is what really sells me and just the beautiful design. Everything on this is just, they really they scrutinize the details. But the point being, you want a really sturdy adjustable angle stem if you're going to have one and they, they've done that but then this is the mosh kiox display that's an upgrade and so if you if you get that it's like well you don't want this to glare in your face you might want to adjust the angle a little bit and i was concerned how are you going to do that and also adjust the headlight and they've figured out they've engineered a solution so they're kind of connected right here on this like pivot and then i think there's another pivot point down here so you can aim the light independently just awesome just so cool to see that very exciting and i got started on this whole rant because i was looking at these magura brakes quad piston calipers up front 180 millimeter a magura rotor in the rear they actually have a special rotor that's designed to fit with the roll-off hub so this is branded as roll-off still 180 millimeters and then that's like the servo and the, the gearing that electronically shifts all the, the gears in there it's a pretty cool setup love that they've gone with black spokes they've even got the reinforcement eyelets excellent rims nice adjustable length kickstand with you know it's really tucked away it, this bike in a lot of ways it's kind of the standard like if you were going to have money as like no object and you were going to try to make the best decisions possible and even design your own stuff what would you do this bike does it um, and, and to me, that's very exciting. As a class one electric bike, this is permissible in the most locations. So you could take this on like a little bit of off-road trail riding if you wanted to, even with these relatively smooth tires. These are the Schwabi Supermoto X 27.5 by 2.4. So they're, you know, it's good volume. This isn't quite boost, uh, or I'm sorry, plus size. It is boost hub spacing up front, but it's not quite plus size. And I think that's a, it's a pretty good, you know, stability, comfort air volume but not so big that uh, you know it gets kind of cumbersome or creates more drag or the steering becomes heavier it, I, again that's why i like the standard delight with just one battery and at first i was like well, why didn't they do the 625 watt hour battery bosch does have one of those but i think it's a little bit longer and then they wouldn't have been able to have three frame sizes which we do have on offer here so i'm on the size medium fits me really well fit is important and that's part of their philosophy with the adjustable stem recent miller has always been about like full suspension and they have this full suspension folding bike it's called like the bird and uh it, it gives you more control so you're not bouncing around you're you're just like a car or something you want good lights you want safety you want comfort and control and that's that's really what you get uh with this bike okay so the other thing it should call out is that they have two different colors i kind of like this one it's industrial looking you'll notice that the the rack is black and a lot of these other kind of touch points they only come in black by the way ergon locking grips gotta love that um, but they have this nice red color as well so it could be like a his and hers setup or if you just want to get one that's a little bit flashier looking and maybe keep you more visible when you're on the road we have those really bright lights we also have reflective sidewall stripes and puncture protection on those tires so shouldn't have to worry too much about that i'm going to flip the bike around in just a second but i want to show you the battery because it's a pretty nice setup it comes with this really great manual all this extra stuff like a little you know leather thing so you can feel good about it this is a you know fancy sports car kind of thing and um I, I think some of the accessories do cost a little bit extra but it's nice that they got that attention to detail so we insert it this is one of the abyss plus locks so that's how it potentially lines up with your folding lock or additional accessories that abyss sells so the first twist drops the battery down 
just like that, so smooth. And it doesn't come all the way out. You have to kind of reach in here. There's this rubberized cover and press this battery right here. Whoop. There we go. Again, 6.4 pounds just on the battery, but 6.8 with all the covers and everything extra that you see here. 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours for roughly 500 watt hours of capacity. So that's my one complaint. I mean, you either got to determine, yeah, I know I'm going to go further. I want to get the Super Delight with two batteries and pay even more. Or I'll get the regular Delight and then I'll just buy an extra battery for the occasional longer ride. But look how big this is. You know, if you had this in a pannier, it would be, it, you know, it'd fill it pretty well. Maybe you could put it on top of this rack back here. This is only rated at um, about 44 pounds, 20 kilograms. Whereas a lot of other bike racks I see are rated at 25 kilograms, 55. It's a minor thing, but considering how beefy this thing looks, I was always a little bit surprised about that. And then I wondered about these like metal blade sort of things. What's going on there? Perhaps it's just a style thing. It's probably going to block panniers from rubbing against your tires. You know, if you're really swinging this bike around it and, and they don't have some way to connect to this. There isn't really like a bungee loop at the bottom. It's it's a very custom rack. So I like how it looks, but there are trade-offs. You can see the wiring for the rear light right there. Both lights do run off that main battery pack that I'm holding. I'm going to try to put this back with you guys. It's a little bit tough to do. Just kind of line up the bottom like this. And then th the challenging part for me has been that you... I don't think you can just force it. See, there's that silver bar in there. You actually have to kind of, you know, twist this key. Let's see if I can do it. I got it. So I had to twist it pretty hard and then it opens up and then you can start to hear it clicking. There it is. And it clicks all the way in. Make sure that it's secure before you start riding away. I've had situations where the battery sort of fell off when I was riding and that's no fun. They do give you the standard Bosch charger, which it's four amp versus two amp. So it's going to charge a little bit faster, get you out there riding again quickly. So I double checked and the seat post is 34.9. And I think on a lot of their bikes, since that's sort of larger than most seat posts, they use a shim, but not when you get the standard, just rigid. This is a Satori aluminum alloy seat post. Um, interesting to see that. I want to comment that down here, it looks like they're using sort of the older traditional uh, sensor with a magnet, a spoke magnet. And Bosch does have a new design that's really close and tucked in here, uh, which might be a little bit less vulnerable. You know, that could sort of throw off the balance just a little bit of this wheel and potentially get bumped out of place. And then you can start getting little errors and stuff. And the display might alert you. Something to keep an eye on with such a custom set up back here with the roll off uh, E14. It's, I can see why, you know, maybe they just weren't able to do it. And I do want to point out dual piston caliper in the rear, quad piston up front. So just extra cooling, a little bit, probably more power with quad piston. And a lot of your weight will shift forward when you're braking. And so having better calipers up front makes sense. And while we're down here, let's point out these pedals. They're okay. You know, it's kind of standard aluminum alloy with plastic and some rubber. So if you slip off, you're not going to scrape up your shins. You could upgrade those and swap them out. I like these, um, what are they well go pedals a little bit larger and they've got these nubs and stuff. Cause I do actually enjoy going off road on trails, even with a kind of a city tire like this, this bike is still very trail capable. And then down here we can see the Bosch performance line CX motor. This is gen four model year, 2020 really compact, just very beautiful. It's like 25% lighter than the older CX motors and all the specs are improved. So this thing's about 6.39 pounds versus 8.8. .8. It still measures your rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. Um, and it's just, you know, physically a little bit smaller, but those characteristics that have improved is that it's 120 plus RPM support. So you can pedal quickly and the motor won't struggle to keep up with you. And that's nice for if you shift down to a really low gear and you like to spin, which is something I do. Um, and then back to power. Okay. So this thing, they, they rate it at like 250 Watts and they don't really tell you that's sort of nominal. They don't tell you peak. Um, I'm guessing it might be like 600 plus Watts, but what they do give you is Newton meters of torque. So it's, it's 75 Newton meters peak, which is quite good. Um, very powerful, especially in combination with such a wide gearing ratio in the rear. 
And then back to the motor down here. Looks really beautiful, nice casing and everything. Kind of got these heat sink blades on the bottom. Uh, a lot of the, the cabling and stuff on this is internally wired. Even up here below the stem, you can see the, the wires and things running through the frame. And then these little rubber grommets. And I think it, it lets you sort of access the frame. I, there's even one over there that at first I thought was like a slap guard or something. But coming back down to actual usage, this is the battery charging port cover. Just kind of pull it up. There we go. Um, not my favorite design. It's like clean and sort of tucked away. And it, it seems to, you know, click in fairly easily, which is nice, but it's so low. Like I'm literally sitting down on the ground right now so that we can, we can look at this so I don't get tired like bending over. And every time you park this bike, you're either gonna have to take the battery off, which requires kind of the unlocking and then push. And then again, putting it back in, you can't really just slap it in. You have to use the key. So there's just a little bit more fumbling going on. And then you got to reach way down here to charge. This is not uncommon for Bosch electric bikes. I just feel like, you know, now we're on the non-drive side of the bike, so it's leaning towards us, which makes it even more difficult to reach. And imagine you're plugged in and then this crank arm gets bumped. It's, it goes right past that charging port. So that's the one area that, you know, it might add a little weight and inconvenience, maybe a reliability question, but if they could put it on the drivetrain side of the bike up high, like right here, that would be awesome, especially for people who struggle to, to bend down and stuff. Uh, so there's a little, kind of a, an extra thought for you. These nice 65 millimeter plastic SKS fenders, um, really well supported. You can see that there's two support arms right here and they go under the fender. They're black, you know, that I've, I was just looking at some other fenders the other day that have these silver rods that come out and they you can adjust how the fender sits but they get bumped out of place easily and you can poke yourself on them. This is the way to go. Even here, they had to compromise a little bit. You can see that there's a plastic clamp around the lowers of the suspension and that can kind of slide up and down and then that would bring the tire closer to the fender. So it's, you know, very custom. They did the best they possibly could with this setup, but it's, it's a, you know, eh, that's one thing that's a little bit of a trade-off. Nice reflectors up here on the front of the suspension. And again, these lights and stuff, this is kind of rated to, you know, for, for use as like kind of a vehicle, commuter vehicle in Europe. So they have all the extra safety features, which I really appreciate. Uh, and then the rear fender, you can see it's got these two support arms right here, as well as um, bolts down here. So it's like four points of support, which is just awesome. And the fender is mounted to the wheel versus the rack being separate. And the rack has this interesting like Bibia adjustable rubber strap and then maybe some other proprietary mounting points sort of a wider tubing gauge here it's not quite standard and that comes back to maybe ha adding as much strength as possible since this thing is just like it's all mounted here it's not supported down there well i moved us to a shadier spot so you can see the display more clearly this is an upgrade that's also part of what made this particular build out a little bit more expensive. The standard display that it comes with is the Bosch Intuvia. It's grayscale instead of color like this. It is removable, which is nice, just like this one. And it has a, a USB charging port, micro USB on the side that's functional. This one has it below, kind of kind of tricky to reach. You know, this custom stem is very nice, but it is still a little crowded up here. Um, it, just something to think about. They've actually got this one bolted down versus letting it be removable. It is magnetic. Um, when I first saw this a couple of years ago, Bosch was sort of demoing it and they were like, yeah, it's got Gorilla Glass and if it falls off, it's gonna be just fine. And it was sort of a mountain biking application where they were like, if the bike crashes, you won't break your display. It just bounces off and it's fine. It, you know, again, this sort of top of the line upgrade here. They also allow you to upgrade to the smartphone hub. So you could just put your phone up here and use that as a display and use GPS and take phone calls and play music, all kinds of options these days. The Kiox and the smartphone hub let you sync with like the Bosch app, which lets you dial in your performance characteristics. And then the Kiox actually has like Bluetooth uh, connectability for heart rate monitor. So you could use this as like an exercise machine, which is really cool and get feedback about how much power you're exerting and potentially calories burned and stuff. So let's boot this thing up. We press the power button down here, it says Kiox. And it does have dynamic, like automatically adjusting brightness. Um, no assist, it's just kind of the default setup, which is gray, and they've colorized it. So anytime you press plus or minus to raise or lower assist, you get different colors. So eco, tour, sport, and turbo. 
And of course, turbo is where you get 75 newton meters of torque and just the highest top speed. So keep that in mind. Um, kind of arrowing left and right here, let you explore some of the different readouts. But before we do that, got a little timer, the assist level, a light indicator, and, and then a battery percentage readout, which is very handy. A lot of the other displays, kind of the basic ones, even the Intuvia, it's not a basic display. It's just, it's many years old at this point. It gives you like five bars, which represents 20% steps. So I like having 1% um, increments on that. And then we're in kilometers per hour right now, but we could go into settings later and adjust that if we wanted miles per hour. This chart down here shows you your current speed and also how much power the bike is putting out versus how much you're putting out as the rider. And as we go left and right now, we've got those other menus. So it says, here's our clock, our range. Range is really cool. It dynamically updates depending on the assist level we choose. So. Uh, you can see 47 kilometers if we go down to sport and then tour says 55 so you can see it you know really giving us a lot more range as we go down to the lowest levels of assist 84 so you know you get a lot less assistance in those lower ones but you're going to extend your your ride quite a bit we'll go to the next set of displays trip distance trip time power cadence average speed 7.7 .7 kilometers per hour max speed and then like a quadrant layout here there's heart rate it's the first time we see that and then just a dedicated heart rate so you could be pedaling this thing and trying to you know keep yourself in a target zone that'd be pretty cool calories burn total distance and then this is the last menu where we have settings and it shows our first battery if we were on the super delight we would have two battery icons here and the cool thing about bosch is they let you charge both batteries at the same time with the one plug so even though it's a little bit inconvenient in terms of how it's placed right there at least you would charge both at the same time so that's the big decision when you're getting one of these bikes like do you pay extra to get the super delight or not it's so much fun i'm just surrounded by you know families riding their bikes, having fun right now. Um, I think that's what we should do, get out there. I, one thing I noticed is that the light, I, I thought it was a horn, but it's actually a, a headlight. So you can see the light over there in the bushes. There we go. I guess I was just excited. I was like, we got a bell and a horn, but no. And then here's the, the roll off. You can shift it standstill. So cool. So maybe you, you have to stop unexpectedly when you're like climbing a hill and you're in such a high gear that you know you're gonna struggle, we can downshift, that is awesome. I do my best to get all the information and record it back at the site and stuff, but there's so much to talk about with these bikes. For me, the, the cool part is it's just a full suspension bike with a suspended rack, a beautifully integrated battery, and, and high quality parts, you know? But if you want this bike, you might have to wait a little while because you order it and then they ship it over from Europe kind of custom made. You, you either do that or you have to buy one that's pre-built at a shop and it might have features that you didn't want or it might be the size that you didn't want. So again, I'm borrowing this one from City Cycles today, just doing a fun little demo review ride. And um, if I was extra tall and I wanted the large, well, they only have medium right now. So I'm gonna wait three months, potentially more depending on shipping conditions. So that's another one of those things to sort of think about. And it's a trade-off with Reese and Mueller for like all their models. So anyway, enough said, I think it's time to finally hop on this thing, stow the kickstand, go off this curb, because we got full suspension, baby. No problem. Now, we're in eco mode right now, which is like the lowest level of assist, and yet it's still kind of loud. Fairly stable handling here, shifting gears, we go now look at how slow i was like really slow cadence i'm not even in the highest gear and that's the power of the roll off and i'm just gonna shift down a little bit and if you hold it it can kind of do like a triple shift there we go i had to let off a little bit that time pedaling the braking is working really well even with just one hand even though the bike weighs a little bit more So that might be one of the trade-offs to consider here is like how much noise the bike's gonna make. And I think it would be a little bit quieter if we had a cassette. Even just the belt going through that pulley system adds a little bit of work and friction. There we go, we're at our top speed of a roughly 32 kilometers per hour. 
really hear the motor going at it. There we go. I outpaced it for a minute there. So the motor kind of faded out and things got a lot quieter. Hopefully you heard that. Okay guys, from here you can see that nice chain like guide and then we got the pulley wheel elevating the belt from gates raising it above that swing arm so you don't have to have a cut through the frame and this is really it's like a swing arm so the suspension design isn't quite as fancy as some of the full suspension mountain bikes where the wheel kind of goes vertically up and down this has a little bit more of a rainbow effect and it's a little bit heavier but still for an urban kind of a full suspension design uh, the mid drive like th this is still is a nice setup potentially the double battery that's that's pretty unique so 60 tooth on that chain ring or belt ring 170 millimeter crank arms and then back here we've got a 22 tooth uh, cog in the rear and just remember not to over tighten that quick release if you're doing wheel maintenance or something because uh, that can cause some issues with uh, this the speed hub from roll off the electronic shifting can be a little bit sensitive that said you don't want it to be too loose either and have some sort of a mechanical failure if you get the upgraded fox air suspension you can sag it for your body weight which is really nice uh, lighter weight a little bit more maintenance for for an air suspension than the spring suspensions from sr sun tour and you know it's a 700 hundred dollar upgrade so keep that in mind i i do have them both open right now just to feel the travel and for me the comfort is totally worth the efficiency loss but they do have compression adjust so you can almost lock it out and then there's also rebound adjust so how quickly the the suspension rebounds depending on the type of terrain you're you're riding and it's kind of nice they put some friction into the drivetrain so if you back pedal it doesn't actually cycle the chain or in this case the belt um, for, for drivetrain maintenance so that's a bit of a trade-off but it does have this like kind of a clicky friction thing so it won't just spin out of control and hit your shins or something that's kind of nice so I've got us in tour which is the second level of pedal assist here I'm gonna pedal along because I to me it's still sort of a loud drivetrain on this one but I'm gonna go off the curb and give you some sense of travel I've got 100 millimeters here instead of 140 that's what you get with the GX like the off-road setup but this is what you get for all the other road kind of urban ones. Nice, I'm going down a hill so the motor's really not having to work too hard. I'm gonna shift this forward so you can see the Maybe the front suspension in action. Lots of fun. Actually caught some air there and I kicked the rear rack when I was getting off just because it, it is extended a ways they've got this nice sloping down to makes the bike a little bit more approachable and i've recorded the standover height and minimum saddle height and stuff back at the site for you now we're up in turbo just listen to the motor how quickly it starts and stops and how dynamic it is based on how i'm pedaling how much pressure i'm exerting and then listen for some of the gear shifting and the pausing uh, which is the shift detection feature from bosch I must say, you know, one of the things I complain about or call out a lot with e-bikes is the weight. But in this case, with the full suspension, it it actually kind of creates this smooth motorcycle feel to the bike because it's it's heavier. Um, so I'm not getting as much like wobble or jittering happening. There's a little bit of rattling, possibly the, the lock right here and maybe that bottle up front. But the rack itself feels very sturdy. I mean, it's just a, yeah, it's, it's, it's like cross between a bicycle and a lightweight sporty motorcycle so this is a hill i've been climbing just to test out some of the different <laughs> drive modes and you know kind of get a, an idea for how powerful one e-bike is compared to another and the bosch system has no problem as long as you shift gears thoughtfully like if you're in a really high gear it doesn't matter if you're in you know we're in tour right now but all the way up to maybe turbo it's still going to be slow and it's going to take a minute to get up to speed you know this drivetrain 
it really depends on on you as a rider so having 14 gears and such a wide range of cadence options it really empowers you to be efficient or not um kind of like a middle gear here i'm just going to pedal along Whoop. starts and stops really quickly like you never feel like things are out of control or anything it's very dynamic too so if i even though i'm in turbo if i just barely push down on the pedals it's quiet not getting a lot of power and then when i start to lean on it yeah you can hear it pick up and see our speed pick up too yeah it's fantastic a lot of fun and neat to see that that display giving me feedback about you know power and cadence and stuff let's go to some of those yeah eight calories baby heart rate and we don't have the heart rate monitor let's see if we can cadence 86 this is climbing i mean right that's that's phenomenal i love that and it's just it makes it fun to ride and the colors help because this is it's not the biggest display and if you're in direct sunlight like this it can be a little bit harder to see and read so yeah those colors help you navigate some of the trade-offs I've I've encountered with the roll-off system is that, um, you know, it does rely on power from the Bosch battery, and that battery is designed to sort of stop giving you pedal assist when it reaches like 10%. The best thing for e-bike batteries in general, lithium-ion batteries, is keep them in a cool, dry location. Make sure they they don't go all the way down. That's hard on the chemistry. Extreme heat is also going to be damaging to those cells extreme cold it's going to limit your range it's almost like it puts it in a coma or something but it's not as hard as like heat so if you can't park this bike inside somewhere at least you could bring the battery to a safer location so anyway with that remaining 10 percent that it automatically tries to save it's going to run those lights it's going to let you shift that you know that hub back there you basically have to have the e-bike on for the roll-off system to work it's not a mechanical system so you only have to press the little buttons which is nice, but again, it's it's like new cars and stuff. They rely on all these computers and things. Recent Miller really only sold through shops and some of the better shops, and it's quite expensive. You have to have a certain amount of inventory and there's that whole shipping delay and everything. So hopefully you have someone there to really help you and walk through all these different little questions and complexities that might come up. So we're back at City Cycles here. You can see the full suspension delight that I really like, and it comes with uh, Nice little shock pump if you get that upgrade on the Fox suspension. It's really nice booklet with just so many manuals because it is, you know, it's a little bit more sophisticated in the world of e-bikes. We got the charger over here. This is a supercharger. It has the two battery setup, which is kind of what this would look like if it was the Super Delight. And then we got the Nevo over there that's pretty approachable with the step through frame. Now, it's more expensive to get the Delight, but for me, you know, I guess I just want to take you back here. See how this has like a suspension seat post right there that is nice it gives you back and shoulder comfort but if you're standing on the pedals maybe trying to already give yourself back and shoulder support then your knees take a bit of a hit with a hard tail so for people with the sensitive knees or you just really want that like suspended rack and stuff that's where this full suspension setup just really shines it's very unique it, it just does such a great job but really all their bikes are pretty fantastic and then here's the kind of the stubby tires with the Schwabi Rock Razor. These are the same tires that you'd get if you upgraded and got the, the GX instead of the GT, and that's the off-road version um, of the Delight. Still 27.5 wheel diameter, which is a nice compromise, sort of a lower attack angle um, without having you know such a big wheel that it's raising the, the frame and not giving you enough space to have some of these wider uh, tires. You know, 2.4 inch right there. It's, it's a pretty good setup. Well guys, that's it. That's the Delight GT roll-off with the roll-off E14 electronically shifting 526 degree planetary hub in the rear. I mean, that pretty cool. They also have the, the GT Touring, which is just a standard cassette derailleur. It's kind of my favorite. It's light, it's quick. Um, and then they have the Enviolo, which is, again, adds a little bit more weight, but that one, there's not gears like stepped. It's a continuously variable transmission. Very cool, but a, a little bit more kind of a little bit of drag on that system by comparison and, and you kind of got this like shifting mechanism it's a little bit different all the coolest new tech from Reese and Mueller I, I definitely enjoy looking at these bikes that's why for me this is like a top pick in terms of premium for commuting or for like a touring 
potentially if you got that second battery. I've listed all the details back at the site and I've got a cool comparison tool. So you can look at other full suspension e-bikes and determine whether you need the suspended rear rack or what your budget is like. A lot of people, you know, use the, the Performance Line CX motor for high torque and it's a really good option um, in, my, in my opinion, especially since you can get it in class one like this bike or class three. I hope that answers your question. I love you guys. Chime in with any comments or feedback. And if you've had this bike or if you've dealt with recent Mueller and what the shippings or shipping times and stuff are like, I always enjoy hearing that um, either in the comments here or in the forums and we'll see you on the next one. Ride safe.